Welcome back to the channel guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to clean and install Windows 11 on an unsupported machine. Okay guys, so this is just going to be a couple of methods for installing Windows 11 completely fresh onto an unsupported laptop. PC. If all you want to do is upgrade from Windows 10 to 11 on an unsupported machine, then you want to refer to my previous video where I show you how to do just that. So I'm just going to go through three fairly simple methods that should allow you to do this without issues. For all of the methods, you will need three things. And those are a working Windows computer. It doesn't have to be Windows 11, it can be Windows 10. You also need a USB stick that is eight gigabytes in size minimum. And you also need a copy of the ISO image for Windows 11, which you can get the latest one from the Microsoft website, as I'm showing you here. So before we actually get into the methods themselves, there's a pretty important consideration you need to make, especially if your machine is from 2010 or older and that is with the upcoming 24H2 release of Windows 11. Microsoft have added the requirement for the SSE 4.2 instruction set. This means if you do not have a CPU that supports this instruction set then you will not be able to boot the 24H2 version of Windows 11 and I'm assuming the subsequent versions when they release in the future. You can just download CPU-Z, open it up and as you'll see there it will be in the list of instructions there if it does have that capability. If it doesn't have that capability then you aren't completely stuffed, you can install 23H2 which is the current version of Windows 11 or any previous versions but you must make sure you don't try and update to 24H2 or anything later because you will not be able to boot your machine if you do that. Uh, what will happen is the Windows logo will show and then your computer will just reboot. It won't even get to your profile screen. So fairly important consideration to make if you're trying to do this with the super super old computer it's probably worth either sticking with Windows 10 or if you're not too bothered about the feature updates then install 23H2 or earlier. But now we've got that out of the way let's get into the methods. So we'll start with the simplest method. To begin you just want to plug your USB into your computer and once you've done that you want to head over to your internet browser and you want to download something called Rufus. I'll put the link in the description for it. And when you open up Rufus you'll get a window that opens that looks like this. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go over to where it says device here, and you wanna make sure that your USB that you've inserted is selected there. Next, you wanna make sure that the boot selection is their disk or ISO image. And then you wanna press the select button and select and navigate to the ISO that you downloaded a few minutes ago. Then you want to leave the image option as standard Windows installation, that's fine as it is. And now the partition scheme. So for this, you need to know whether your system is a UEFI system or a BIOS system. If you know for sure that your system is a UEFI system, then you can leave the partition scheme as GPT. If you're unsure or you think it's a BIOS system, then you need to leave the partition scheme as MBR and in 90% of cases it will boot. So next, if you click on the show advanced drive properties there, there's just an option at the bottom that is completely optional. I normally turn this off, but I imagine it will work with that left on. And if you're doing this for an older computer, it might be recommended to use that option there, which is add fixes for older BIOSes. Next is the volume label. Now you can just leave it as is if you want, but I'm going to call it Windows 11 installer, just because I can. You shouldn't need to mess with the advanced format options there. By default, they should be set up similar to mine. So you can leave those as it is. Then all you want to do is hit start. And this is where we get a few options now relating to the fact it's a Windows 11 installation. So the only absolutely essential option you need here is that very first one there that is remove requirement for four gigabytes of RAM and secure boot and TPM. 
That is the only option you need selected in order to install Windows on an unsupported machine. However, I do recommend you use pretty much all of these options here, including removing the requirement for a Microsoft account, creating an account for you, saving you the time of having to do that yourself. Just brilliant time savers. So once you're happy with the selections you've made, you just want to hit OK. You'll get this warning box here that says that all the data on the USB will be destroyed. So just double check that the USB that is listed there is the one that you're using to do this with. So you just want to hit OK. And at that point, you just want to wait for Rufus to complete. Uh, when it's completed, you should be able to take your USB over to your computer and boot from it. So in order to actually boot from the USB, you need to enter your BIOS setup. And the hotkey to do this is different depending on what manufacturer and what board you're using normally there's something like f2 or f10 or f12 you just want to enter your bios setup so you want to find and disable an option called secure boot if it's there if you can't see an option for secure boot then look for something like usb boot and make sure that's enabled or usb ports on boot or anything that relates to usb and booting if you can't see any of those settings or you're pretty sure that you've set them correctly then Plug your USB into your computer, reboot it, and it should reboot to the Windows setup, and you should be able to just install it to the disk that you put into your computer. If there's already an operating system on the machine you're trying to put this Windows 11 installation onto, then you'll also need to locate the boot option hotkey. Otherwise, the machine will just continue to boot to the old operating system. Now, for the majority of people, that will be the only method you have to try and you'll be able to install Windows 11 successfully on your unsupported machine. But for a small number of machines, especially older ones, they tend to have an issue booting Rufus drives. I'm not sure what it is, but what will happen is the BIOS splash screen will show and then nothing will happen. It won't proceed past that. I've only come across a few machines that do this, not very many, but for the ones that did do this, I was able to use the next method I'm going to show you now. So again, you want to plug your USB, the same one, into your computer, your working operating system, and you want to download something called Ventoy. Again, I will put the link to do this in the description. So once you've downloaded Ventoy, you want to extract the folder in the zip file to your desktop and open it up and it should look something like this. You want to look for an application called Ventoy to Disk and you want to double click on that. You should then see a window like this and it should say device and you should be able to select your USB that you've put in the computer. Once you're sure that you've selected the right USB, you just want to go ahead and press install. And again, it will give you the warning about it being formatted, etc. You just want to press yes and wait for it to be installed. Once it's installed, you can go over to this PC. You should see a new drive there called Ventoy. And all you want to do is you want to copy the ISO that you downloaded for the first method and paste it right into the root of Ventoy. Just, just drag it over to Ventoy and wait for that to copy. And once it's copied and you can see it there, all you have to do is to do the same thing as with the first method. So make sure your computer is set up to be able to boot USBs, plug it in and boot. Now, the only difference this time is that you should get a menu when Ventoy boots and it should look something like this and you should be able to see your Windows ISO there on the list. It should be the only thing on the list. And all you want to do is hit enter and it will then proceed to boot. And then you should be able to install Windows 11 exactly the same as the first method. In the unlikely scenario that both of the methods have been unsuccessful and you've been unable to boot into the Windows 11 installer, then all hope isn't lost. There is one last thing you can try. It's not the preferred method as it takes the longest, but this one should definitely work. So all you want to do is you want to head over to the Microsoft Windows 10 download page and you want to download the Windows 10 installation media. And once you've done that, you want to run it and you want to use the same USB again that you've used for the other two methods to create a Windows 10 installer USB. And ultimately what you'll be doing here is boot your computer into the Windows 10 installer, install Windows 10, and then what you need to do is you need to head over to my other video where I show you how to upgrade from 
a Windows 10 machine that doesn't support Windows 11 natively. I will put the link for that video in the description. Yes, I realize it's obviously the longest method and definitely not the preferred method, but if the other two easy methods fail, then that is the only one left. It's very unlikely that you will need to get to that stage, but if you have to, at least there is a third way to do it. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one.